Hi, in this session I'll show you how to create a dynamic chart with radio buttons so you can cycle through different series of values. So let's say for example we have a table here that lists the sales of shirts, pants, and shoes throughout this 10 year period from 2003 to 2013. So if I just click on the radio button here, I can see what the trend is for the shirt and what it is it for the pants and what is it for the shoes. So basically you kind of have a line graph that you can kind of do some comparisons or you can kind of toggle uh, and compare the different items here. So this particular chart is basically composed of a couple of things. We have your table, you have a secondary table. I put a secondary table behind here. Let me move this over. There's a secondary table. Let me go ahead and increase and I double click that to show that. So this is the table that, that drives the data in this chart. So you can see, for example, if I click on the pants radio button, everything went not, F, not NA except the pants column. And if I click on shoes, it will do the same thing. Everything goes NA except the shoes and then the shoes, this value gets updated. So this particular chart is being fed off the data in this table. And this table is being fed off of this table because there are some if commands that are, f are sourcing the data from here. And there's also the selection here that this is feeding off this. So let's show you how this whole thing is created. Let me go and bring this back. It's a little messy here. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done. I've already gone into a, another sheet here and kind of copy the source table from. And uh, we have this particular value here, and this is going to feed into the other table here. And this one is actually going to feed into the title. But uh, I'll kind of describe that a little bit later. Go, we'll go ahead and just make a copy of this table. Control C to copy. Bring it over here. Control V to paste. And what I want to do here with this particular form formula is let me go ahead and identify this is the shirt is number one, pants is number two, and shoes is number three. So basically, as this value changes from one, two, and three, the contents in here will change. So the first, what I'm going to do first here is make this a formula, make this an if formula, or put an if function in here. So I'm going to say if this particular cell, if that equals the value of one, then I want it to bring back this value. So as it gets copied, as when I press Control Enter, since I selected this whole range, Control Enter will copy down uh, the whole function or the whole formula here and adjust it for each particular uh, row designation. So I'll show you what I mean when I complete this formula. So I'm going to say it equals B5. So if it is not true, so basically if A2 equals 1, if that's true, then B5, bring back B5, which is A29. If it is not true, use the NA function. So basically this just brings back non-applicable. Let me close the parentheses, press control and enter, and basically this will copy the formula all the way down. So you'll see that now this particular cell is looking at B5, which is here, and this one is going to look at B6, which is here, and at the bottom this will look at B15, which is the bottom one down there. So if I change this to 1, then it's going to bring back those values. Right now it's 3, and it's not going to bring it back but if I change that to 1, you'll see now the values have changed. And the reason why this other, these other ones haven't changed is I forgot to make this a, an absolute formula. So let me go ahead and select the cell here. And I want to make this an absolute range. So this should say A2. And I should press the F4 key to put dollar signs in front of A2. Because what happened was when I copied it down, this made it A3, A4, A5. So basically, it doesn't work. So if I press Control Enter again, now you see that A2 stay this, A stays the same at each of these different cells, but the other formula reference changes from B5 to B13 down there, right? So if I change this to 2, that will go NA, right? These all go NA. So if I change it back to 1, it will bring back the values here. Now for the other rows, I just basically do the same thing. I select that and I type equal if, I'm going to tab it to give me my opening parentheses, if A1, and I'm press the F4 key, equals 2, now this is going to be the second one, if it equals 2, then I want to bring back this value, and if that's, if that's true, if it's false, then NA again, and then NA, the open parentheses, close parentheses, 
and then a closing parenthesis. Press Control Enter. Since I selected this whole range of cells, it will copy it all down. So right now it's NA, but if I select, if I click over here and type 2, it would give values, and then that disappears because it's looking for the number 1. So I'll do the same for shoes. So I'm going to go ahead and select this whole range here, go under here, and type if, if tab, if this, press F4. If that equals, to put the dollar signs in front of the A and the 2, if that equals 3, so this is going to be the third option. If that's true, then bring back this value. If it's false, bring back NA. And then press Control Enter to copy the formulas all the way down. And if I press, if I type 3 here, this value will show up, and the other two columns here will be NA. So right now I've got my kind of formula all set up. What I can do now is I can create a chart off this. So right now I'm going to go ahead and insert the chart. Let me go and click outside of the table because if I if I have my cursor inside the table and I go insert chart, it's going to take data in here and populate the chart. But I want to try to do it from scratch to show you how it's done. So I go to insert chart. I'm going to insert a line chart. Click that one and bring it here. So now we have nothing. But what I want to do now is start populating this. So under the design tab of the chart tools, go to select data, and basically, whoops. Basically, what I want to do is I want to add the series one by one. Add this series, this series, and this series, and then add the year for the horizontal category axis. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add. It will give me another window. This first series name is Shirt. And then I'm going to delete this, and then just select from G5 to G15. Click Enter, and now that gives me Shirt, and you'll see that it's got a line here. And, what I want, and basically it shows nothing because it's all NA right now. So what I want to do is I want to add another series, go under Pant for the series name, delete this series value, and select from H5 to H15, press Enter, and add another one for shoes. And I'm going to click Shoes here, and then Series Value, and then delete that and select from I5 to I15, press Enter. And now the only thing that should be showing up for the line is the shoes, because that's the only one that has data. Anything that's that at, at NA, that kind of disappears. Excel does not chart it. Now the last thing I want to do is get this horizontal axis labeled. So I'm going to go ahead and click Edit, and I want the label range. I'm going to just select from F5 to F15. Press Enter, and now I've got that set up. Click OK, and basically now I've got my lines. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of those grid lines. And what I'm going to do right now is what I need to do is create the control chart that gives me the radio buttons. And those radio buttons are going to be under the developer tab. Now you may not have a developer tab here, and if you don't, what you can do is you can right click any tab and right click and go customize ribbon. And under customize ribbon, you should have a checkbox here that says developer. If that's not checked, check it, and then you'll get that tab. I have it checked, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. And under the developer tab, I'm going to go under the controls group and insert a radio button. Before I do that, I want to group my radio buttons together. And I can use this particular grouping tool. It's a group box. And what it does is it kind of groups them all together. Um, and they all kind of uh, fall under similar properties. So I'm going to click this group box. I'm just going to create a group box here first. And then after that, I'm going to put each of the individual radio buttons in there. So I'm going to put this one in here. And after I draw one, I can basically just copy and paste. Let me go ahead and select, move this one up a, little, up a little bit more here, maybe move it over here. And what I can do is I can just press the Control D to duplicate that, and it's going to duplicate that radio button. And then bring it over here, and then press, press Control D one more time, and move it over here. Right now, I need to go ahead and have these radio buttons call a certain cell. So basically, once you click on the radio button, it's going to output a number somewhere. So it's going to output a number here. So I'm going to click this first radio button, because this is the first one created. So this is going to be 1. This is the second one created. This is going to be 2. And this one's going to be 3. So you need to keep track of that when you create these. So I'm going to right click the radio button, go under Format Control. And for the cell link, I'm going to select A2. So it's going to select A2. I'm going to click OK. And if you notice, if I go under here and right click it and go into Format Control, this is also selected because it was part of that grouping. So they're all going to be selected for there. So I can just do a quick check on this one. This one should be the same thing. It's going to point to, oh no, it doesn't point to A2. So if it doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and just choose A2 there. So that's set. Right. 
So now you'll notice that actually, if I clicked here, it, it changes to one. I click on this, this changes to two. But I click on this, it doesn't go do anything because this is not. I think this one was, was created outside of the group box. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to go ahead and press that and delete, and then select this again. Right click it, and then I'm just going to copy, and then Control V to paste. So let's see if this puts it in there. Let me see. Click that. Click outside, and then we click this, and let's see if it shows up for three. Yep. So now, because it's part of the group, it will it will reference a two. So sometimes you see that happening. That's why I wanted to create this little group box here because it groups the values together. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Right. Click that. Make this a little bit bigger. So it fits it a little bit better, right? So now I can just give it names. So the first one was a shirt. So I'm just going to go and click that. Right click that, and oops, let me go. Let me click this, and maybe I can just click in there. And now the cursor is blinking, so I can edit it. So I can call this one. I can call this one shirt. Call this one pants, and then call this one. So right now, let me just go and check it one more, time. one more time. Shirt is number one, pants is number two, shoes is number three. And so you'll notice that you know when you when you select this, this goes one, two, and three. So it affects this particular cell. This changes from one to three, and of course that cell is called on these particular cells. That has to equal one. You see the one here. Otherwise, it would not populate the values here. This has to equal two. Uh, otherwise, it won't populate the values here. And the same for shoes there. So now, kind of the rest of it is um, kind of uh, formatting the the chart. And so you had noticed earlier, I had created this chart. Let me go ahead and move this over here. Uh, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. I didn't have the legend here because it's kind of this doesn't change too much. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove that, click that, and press delete. You notice that I had a title up here that changed whenever we changed the radio button here. So what that was was basically just the title. So I went to layout and click chart title and have the title above the chart. And basically, I'm just calling this cell. So I'm putting equal and I'm calling this cell here. This cell changes. So let me go ahead and click that, press enter. So whenever I click on pants, that changes the pants. Click on shoes, that changes the shoes. And so the reason why it changes because there's a formula here. It's, it's a choose formula. So basically, it's choosing this cell here, A2, which is here. So one, two, and three. So depending on which number it comes back with, it's going to choose the first setting, the first placement, the second placement value, or the third placement value. So shirts is one, pants is two, and shoes is three. So those have to be enclosed in quotes. So as you notice, like when I change this shirt, this changes to change it down here, this changes to shirts because it's looking at cell A2, which is the number one. It's going to the first place setting, which is shirts. And of course, this is calling that cell. And that's why I get shirts there. So some final formatting is maybe we want to clean this up a little bit. We don't want the grid lines. We can go to view and uncheck the grid line so that's gone. And maybe we want to hide this. So I can go ahead and select this and click hide. And you notice that once I've done that, you've kind of got kind of a nice clean chart here now. And uh, you can oh, there's one more thing. Uh, you can edit also edit this uh, this particular text here, this group box. So I can just call that selection and press enter. And now I can just select through different ones, and I can do a comparison of the values between these three items. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.